I analyzed Defran, who's currently top 10 on the ladder, maining Bastion, and I put together the ultimate Bastion guide, because Bastion is a new anti-meta pick that is incredibly powerful. But special thanks to the sponsor of this video, Game Leap. Game Leap and I partnered together to develop a 10 video course. We got VOD reviews, advanced analysis, and more that is designed to help you improve as quickly as possible. So if you want to support the channel and climb incredibly fast, go check it out right now in the links using code MILLS for 25% off. But let's get back into the video. Now, Bastion has been out of the game for quite some time, and with his new addition as of a couple of days ago, many were wondering just how good Bastion would be. But we're seeing players like Defran absolutely dominate, climbing to top 10 with Bastion. But you might be wondering, how did he do this? And how is Bastion good? Well, the first thing that we need to talk about is Bastion's abilities. First off, let's talk about his primary fire. Now, Bastion, when he's not in turret form, wants to occupy a mid to long range against the enemy. Bastion's primary fire is going to be able to headshot and you're going to want to be very specific with the shots you're taking poking with your team for the most part simply waiting for the time in between you have your turret form now there's two things you need to understand first off you can't be using this weapon from close range because even defran is not hitting consistent shots with this weapon when trying to hit targets from close range because if it's low rate of fire and long effective range you really want to try to maintain a fairly far distance from your opponent and the second thing that you need to understand about this ability is you need to be trying to intentionally bait out cooldowns by focusing specific targets and trying to hit as many criticals as possible because the more cooldowns that you bait out with your primary fire during your poke phase like bubbles and genji's reflect the more likely you're going to be able to pull off a really insane play when you cycle to that turret form speaking of turret form this is the bread and butter of bastion and it's what makes him so good now you are going to move slower when you're in your turret form and the turret form could not headshot so you should be aiming center of mass not trying to go for any criticals because you just want the maximum amount of pellets at the enemy now the thing about this is you can absolutely destroy people in turret form your damage per second is some of the highest in the game and in overwatch 2 in particular tanks feel unkillable for the most part but with bastion turret form if a tank is out of position they will just straight up die this is even against some of the abilities that can mitigate damage like zar a bubble but we're getting a little too far ahead of ourselves let's talk about his tactical grenade now it will not bounce off the ground so if you shoot at the ground you can get consistent damage in front of you or when someone's hiding behind cover but it will bounce once off of walls this is great to stick to like a tank that's in the open because they're simple but the most common use you're going to find of this is getting an enemy that is hiding from you when you go into that turret form not only is it going to boop them a little bit that is going to peek them into your line of sight but if they're one shot hiding out of your los you could do that last bit of damage and then last up, the tactical grenade can be used on yourself to allow you to get a little bit of high ground. So if you're trying to get somewhere quickly or go a very specific route that needs the high ground, that can be useful in a pinch. Now, last up, we got to talk about Bastion's ultimate. Now, while this ultimate is powerful, there's several things you got to be careful of. First off, you're easy to punish. If there's an enemy that has great mobility, they're going to be able to come to your ult and kill you very easily if you're not waiting for them or planning to use your ult on them or even aware of them. Characters like Tracer and Genji, these characters are going to come after you very specifically. So it'd be a good idea to know their position before you pop this ult. The other mistake that people are making with this ultimate is trying to kill a whole bunch of people. The best use and the most reliable use of something like this outside of a combo is to use on a target that doesn't have great mobility and use all of them on the same target. So if an Ana is scoped in, for instance, you could literally use your entire ultimate on her and get a free pick off. Remember that you could still go in. Now they have less sustain. You still have your turret form. So getting a guaranteed pick at the start of a fight is insane as not something that you should take lightly. Don't try to get too greedy with this and not get any value out of it. Now, when looking at Defran's gameplay, we're starting to see some of the strengths of Bastion in the meta and some of the big weaknesses that you have to look out for. Now, what is exactly the big benefit to Bastion over any other hit scan? What is his reason for being played at all compared to many of the other DPS in the game? But 
it comes down to the fact that he can burst through large healing or protection. If Azaria is out of position, but she has a bubble left, oftentimes she can do a lot of damage. You try to focus her, she's going to use that secondary bubble to get back to her team. Now, you see, Bastion doesn't really care about a lot of this damage mitigation, like bubble, for instance, or this giant amount of pocket healing, because he does damage so quickly. If the Zarya is out of position, relying on that one bubble to get her to safety, a turret formed Bastion can absolutely annihilate her, breaking the bubble and killing the Zarya before she has any chance to get healed, and even doing it while she's getting healed. This allows Bastion to play in a very specific way where he's poking, counting the cooldowns of the enemy, and analyzing what cooldowns they have left, and then if any enemy is ever out of position, he just gets to pop his tank form and kill them, especially the tank, who is really the carry right now with tanks being so strong, because most of the time, tanks are very, very hard to punish, and DPS actually don't even want to focus the tank. They want to go into the back line, kill supports, try to make plays on other DPS, but Bastion is an outlier who actually gets to punish these tanks over and over again for trying to get too much value, forgo their positioning, and push up. In addition to this, he can punish characters that really think like they should not be able to be killed. Like Amora in ult, for instance, because he does so much damage, you can just straight up kill her. Just track her and kill her. Primal Rage, you can kill. Winston's that jump in, you can shred his bubble and shred him before he has any chance to get out. And even Primal Rage, you can shred. So in a world that is dictated by tanks that are unable to be punished very easily, Bastion can actually destroy them. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Bastion does have key weaknesses. One of the big weaknesses to Bastion is that he's rather large. He's a very big target, and he's easy to focus down and hit shots on by other hit scans and, of course, divers as well. Bastion is a character that is not going to have a great matchup in a 1v1 duel with the enemy, especially enemies that want to play at that same range as him, but hit shots easier. Characters like Ash and Hanzo, these characters are pretty annoying for Bastion to deal with, and then, of course, he's not very effective at that close range, so characters that want to jump on top of him, like Genji, can be pretty problematic. Problematic, but with proper spacing, he can mitigate some of those problems. Now, on top of that, Bastion is also much better when you have ample resources. As a solo queue character, he can be pretty difficult because you're leaving aside a lot of the combos that work really well with him, and you're not getting ample resources by your team guaranteed. So if you have multiple enemies coming after you, he doesn't really have any way to get away. He needs to position very well and safe, and it's pretty easy to punish a Bastion that is isolated. Now, speaking of which, let's talk about some of the counters that you need to be careful of. Characters like D.Va are very, very hard for you to deal with because unlike the damage mitigation of Zarya Bubble, DM just completely shuts you down. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't actually play against a D.Va. You just have to be more careful about the transition between your poke phase and your all-in turret form phase, which is a really important concept to master on Bastion. But we're going to get to that at the end. Speaking of which, if you like this video so far, please consider subscribing subscribing and pressing that thumbs up. Now let's talk about some Bastion synergy. What are the best duos to be rocking with Bastion? And the first one and probably the most overpowered with Bastion is Kiriko. Kiriko Rush is insane because one of the few weaknesses to Bastion's turret form is that he's slow and it's hard to chase down enemies. They can run away from him and just wait it out. But with Kiriko Rush, not only are you even more lethal where you can literally delete pretty much anyone in the game, but you can chase people down. And it's just incredible what Defran has pulled off with Kiriko Rush combos. And in addition to this, Kiriko can bail you out. If you get naded, if you get CC'd, if you get trapped, whatever the case may be, Kiriko is the perfect character that not only enables your plays, but can bail you out of danger. And being able to play in this cycle where you're poking, going into the turret form, making plays, poking, going for the turret form, and making plays, and then eventually rushing and going for a huge play is an insane cycle of plays that really forces through team fight wins. Now, another character that is really good against Bastion is a character that counters him, D.Va. D.Va can protect you, she can peel for you, so if there's multiple divers on you, she could get them off of you, and you can cycle your DM with Bastion cooldowns. So, if you allow Bastion to stay alive long enough for his turret form, you can protect him until then, and then when he goes in in his turret form, you can make sure that no big cooldowns hit him. And then, of course, Baptiste is a great one. 
protects him when he's in his turret form, can use the window, and it's really great. I think that Baptiste is a little bit worse than Kiriko, especially for more momentum and aggressive rushes, because you can't really push forward as fast without Rush, and Rush does everything that Amp does, but adds the ability for Bastion to push space forward, but Baptiste also provides some other utility, and I think Kiriko, Baptiste together as like the support duo for Bastion is insane. Now this final section is the most important thing that you need to do if you want to get guaranteed value on this character and what Defran consistently does in addition to his godlike aim, which is another video that I need to do about how to improve your aim. We'll get to that later down the line. Look out for that. But Bastion has a duality to him, which is something that I've talked about on characters like Genji, where there's like a poke phase and a brawl phase. With Bastion, it's more like a poke phase and a turret phase. Bastion wants to poke between the plays and cycle in turret plays when he sees an opportunity. Remember, the turret is on a 12 second cooldown and it's really important that you use the turret on very key moments because you don't wanna just use it when you have it and then not have it when you need it. And a lot of times, if you don't set up the optimal situation, your turret form isn't going to get any value, and then when you actually need it, you're not going to have it, and you're just going to be someone that is just like a really fat target that can do distance from mid to long range when your team is going into the fight. So for the most part, Bastion is going to be poking out those key cooldowns. He wants to track the cooldowns of things that can stop him. How much DM does the target have? Does the Genji have reflect up? How many bubbles does Zarya have? And base when he goes into his turret based on a lot of those factors. Like I said with the Zarya example, if the Zarya has one bubble and she's a little bit out of position bastion can punish that with his turret form but if she's out of position with two bubbles it might actually backfire because you're gonna go for this play really trying to kill this zarya and she's gonna be able to live because of the double bubble and then you're gonna be out of position and your turret form is gonna die and then the czar is going to be max charge and it's going to be really really bad so it can backfire onto you it matters more about doing all your impact and value in very key moments but you have to wait for those windows to appear you can't just throw out your turret form hoping that it's going to work out for you each and every time on top of that the secondary aspect to bastion's play style is you need to know when it's okay for you to quote unquote alpha up as bastion there are going to be some situations where an enemy makes a vital error or you see a window of opportunity where bastion could just go all in with this turret form and try to get a ton of value and just basically play freaking aim labs for a little bit to give you an example let's say you're playing like the high ground for a little while poking with your team and the enemy is playing ana and zen but the rest of their team are pushed up pretty aggressively and the on and Zen are kind of in the back. But if you like push forward and jumped, you would be like right on top of them. And you hear the Ana use her sleep dart and she doesn't have anything to stop you. Even if you jump in there and turret form, even if they both focus you, they're not going to be able to kill you faster than you're going to be able to kill them. So that's a situation where you can literally alpha up, kill both of their supports, and uh, probably just win the fight outright. And that's just one example of many. There are going to be key situations where you're not afraid of any of the threat, and you think that because of your burst damage, you're going to be able to shut down enemies so quickly and make so much impact so fast that it doesn't actually matter if you're out of position, and it doesn't matter if you're just jumping straight into that turret form and going right into combat. Now, I hope this guide has helped you learn how to minimize Bastion's weaknesses while absolutely maximizing his strengths. But use code MILLS at the Game Lead checkout for 10 video in-depth cores, 50 more videos from Grandmaster Plus players, and you support the channel, which I really appreciate, guys. Thank you so much for coming by, and I'll see you next time.